good morning all of you i hope i am audible and i hope the screen is also clearly visible to all of you yes vivek okay so as you all know this is the introductory class for the asat examination and uh, when you all have taken admission i'm sure all of you have received your compilers now this compiler plus the mocks which we provide is all you have to prepare for your reset examination <clears throat> all the classes are recorded we will be conducting live sessions uh, every one week or every two weeks depending on the number of doubts you all have you all can always message us on the group that you all have doubts we will either resolve them on the group or assignment wise when we will be taking the doubt classes you can ask during that time now make sure that when you all are done with watching the topics there are also some classes in the name of assignments or in the name of doubts so whenever you all are done with the topic try solving the compiler there will be many questions that you all may not be able to solve because they are slightly advanced in nature so at that time once you are done trying once by yourself then you must watch these classes as well then i can assure you that 80 to 90% of your doubts should be cleared after that however of course after that also we will be conducting doubt sessions for you all as well where we'll uh, conduct regular discussions about your uh, progress with the syllabus now coming to the syllabus as all of you know the asat examination consists of five parts first one is the mathematics part for 30 marks then we have the statistics part again for 30 marks then we have di lr and english we have di lr and english so as you can see this is 60% of your paper and this is 40% of your paper but i will strongly strongly recommend that don't ignore this because it's just 40% because these three parts are in fact the most scoring parts maths and stats you can find questions which where you might not know the topic or where you might not know that particular kind of question but di lr and english it is very tough to find a question where you cannot make head or tail about it you will definitely be able to land up somewhere in these three sections there is no negative marking in the asat examination it is just a plus 100 marks paper it's a plus 100 marks paper approx 70 questions are asked some questions are one mark some two marks and some three marks for example in the english section for three marks we have the comprehension there will be a passage and there will be three questions following the passage which you have to solve for three marks even in the other four portions you will find questions of one mark two marks and three marks when you give our mocks you will be understanding the question pattern better but before that it is important that you grasp the topics well once you know the topics then it does not matter whether it's for one mark or three marks what matters is that you are able to solve the question now when we will be <coughs> practicing sums in the class that time also since you know it's a completely mcq based examination it's an mcq center based examination which means that you all will have to go to iai uh, affiliated centers there you will be provided with systems and you have to give your exam over there it is not home based it is center based you do not have to carry any laptop or system of your own all you have to carry is very important calculator a calculator list a calculator list uh, will be provided to you on the group however this is the calculator which we will suggest you all should buy because this calculator 
will be used for all your further actuarial papers not just the asset examination so make sure you all purchase these calculators in case you all have any issue in finding it even though it's widely available you all can contact us you have to carry your stationery and your admit card stationery and your admit card or hall ticket which you will receive once you have registered for the examination <coughs> in all the sections you are allowed to use your calculators and in fact this calculator is going to prove very helpful in performing the calculations during the classes you will also uh, learn how to use the calculator uh, efficiently so that your work is done in lesser time now during the class we will be teaching you different kinds of tricks to solve the questions some of the very common questions the shorter and more efficient ways to solve them because it's an mcq based exam you do not have to show any workings what matters is accuracy and speed so accuracy and speed has to come with only practice the more you practice the better your speed and accuracy will become it does not matter if you are solving the questions very slowly very carefully just to get accurate answers it means that there are very high chances you will not be able to complete the paper and at the same time if you try focusing on the speed your accuracy may go for a toss so it is important that you practice and keep both these things in control all right now coming back to the five sections which we have the di lr and english portions they are very important and the main thing is you will see that there are not many classes for these sections for di and lr there are still some classes but for english there are lesser number of classes and more sessions where we are simply discussing things because english can only be uh, done well with practice so we have provided you with a lot of exercises plus we will be giving you some extra practice questions through our mock platforms so make sure that you try and do regular practice of the english section now the di and lr section i would suggest that continue this side by side with your maths and stats preparation why because these are comparatively lighter in nature but more scoring in nature as well so that is why if you start from the very beginning then you will be able to grasp them well you will be able to practice more again for dilr portions apart from the assignments we have other practice questions that will be provided to you via the mocks so once you start with the di and lr make sure you are also beginning with the maths and stats portion now the maths and stats portion how to go about it in the compiler you all will find that there is an index oh just give me a second now in the index the topics are given in a particular order it is very important to follow that order because some of the topics are slightly interrelated what i would suggest <coughs> is start with the mathematics portion start with the mathematics portion first watch the relations and functions classes the apgp classes and then you have two options either you can cover this section first or you can cover this section first this is option 1 and this is option 2 <clears throat> what i would suggest is that after covering a certain mathematics portion if you all feel that you are getting bored and you want to do something different then you can move on to the stats portion and cover the first two chapters which is ct dispersion and probability permutations and combinations otherwise if you want to go section wise then you can finish your entire calculus portion which is limits derivatives and integration <clears throat> but one thing which you have to keep in mind is for the next two sections 
you need calculus you need basic knowledge of calculus to cover these topics so i would suggest that definitely first complete your calculus and then come to topic 11 and topic 12 which is the random variables and distributions portion all right now vectors and matrices are independent which means you don't need prior knowledge from any other topic same goes for correlation and regression these are a few independent topics now this miscellaneous portion which you can see this actually involves all kinds of sums from the different topics in mathematics so you will find a lot of more calculus questions in this section for sure and even from the other portions especially the portions which are not covered in the other assignments for example some very basic binomial theorem questions some basic expansion questions which you will be covering you will find those in the miscellaneous section what i would suggest is go for the miscellaneous section once you are done with the entire mathematics portion so that you can complete the entire assignment at a go and not have to leave questions in the middle again and again the di section consists of many questions there are different kinds of questions you have your bar charts you have your line charts Venn diagrams, pie charts. You have data tables, etc. Mainly, these are the uh, kinds of charts covered. You have to learn how to study them, how to read them, and how to interpret them, which you will be tested by using few questions. Okay, so DI portion you will definitely get ample practice enough for the examination. then we will move on to the english portion now in the english portion as you all can see there are many topics covered now all of these topics have been organized specially for you in the aset examination there is no set syllabus for any of the topics but they can give you a mixed bag from any of these topics plus some other general english grammar questions so that is why try to do let's say half assignment a day even if you do half assignment a day it will be good enough practice apart from that if you all feel that you all need some more practice for english or let's say if you all are done with the assignments a little early then you can always refer to high school english grammar by renan martin most of you must be having this at home otherwise nowadays even online the exercises from this book are available so you can easily look for exercises from this book it's a very good book to improve your english here you will find exercises as well as lists of idioms phrasal verbs etc so if you want to polish your english you can definitely uh, go through this book lastly we have the logical reasoning section now the logical reasoning section again usually we come across around 8 questions in this section and as you all can see we have covered 8 sections in our lr portion as well usually the 8 questions pertain from these topics only usually which means there is a 90% probability that you all will be facing questions from these topics only so again half an assignment is good enough per day for these there are some topics for example clock calendar um seating arrangement these topics are such and even syllogism actually that you might need some tips and tricks to go uh, do the questions more quickly of course you can apply your logic and arrive at the answer but there are always some specific techniques to do the, do the question which we will cover in the lr classes itself so make sure before you attempt these assignments if there is a video class for that make sure you watch it and then you try doing the assignments okay again in this we have the miscellaneous section here we have tried to cover all those questions that do not fall under these topics plus a few questions for extra practice now the maths and stats portion we have divided the entire syllabus into certain topics but 
make sure you remember that now you have entered into the professional world in this professional examination world it is not necessary that you know 100% of the paper there can always be times that you may not know 100% of the paper so you have to start preparing yourself mentally from day one that it is fine if you don't know 100% the passing marks for the asset examination is 50 out of 100 this is the pass mark for the asset examination i am telling you in my term i was the rank holder and i received 86 marks so you can understand that if the person scoring the highest marks in an examination is getting 86 percent then of course i am telling you from my personal experience even i did not know 100 percent of the paper when i sat for the exam so that is why please prepare yourselves like that whatever you know you have to know well whatever you don't know it is completely fine some way you can try and guess the answer there is no negative marking so of course you must attempt 100% of the paper don't leave any question for any reason okay if, if that one mark helps you pass also it is a lot so always attempt the entire paper but don't feel demotivated if you come across questions which you are not sure of even when you are practicing in the assignments after so in the classes we discuss a certain level of questions in fact a mixed level of questions then when you go to the assignments you will see that a few questions are of a slightly higher standard and then finally when you appear for the mocks in the mocks we have given 100 percent exam oriented questions which have come in the iai papers and questions similar to that so at that time you will feel that there are a lot of questions which you are facing problems in for all the mocks also we have separate videos where we have discussed most of the questions in the mocks so again once you are done with the mock you should refer to those videos either you will find better ways to solve the sums or any sums or any questions which you have not been able to solve you will be able to solve them now so don't get demotivated by this always remember that the kind of questions you will be faced with will go upwards they will always go upwards and more advanced which is why it is necessary that the last 15 days in fact i would say keep a target of 20 days focus on mocks and by mocks i mean full mocks 100 marks mocks you will be provided with many terms i have seen students who leave the mocks for the last three to four days please remember there are many mocks and the mock questions are actually the most important for your preparation once you are done with the entire syllabus and practice they are the mock questions which are going to help you ace the examination so please keep a target that in the last 20 days you have to be done with most of your syllabus and you have to start giving the mocks you have to start practicing the mocks so that you know you get an idea what it's going to be like in the examination okay all the full mocks have been uh, designed keeping in mind the exam pattern they have been prepared keeping in mind the style of questions asked in the ASET examination okay now the maths portion most of you I'm sure must be having maths in class 11 and 12 the entire portion is like a build up on your 11 12 syllabus you will not see topics that are completely new but again you will see new portions in every topic every topic you will learn something new for example matrices in matrices you all might have done addition subtraction basic operations you all have done row transformation column transformation you have done symmetric matrix asymmetric matrix etc but in the asset at the asset level in matrices you will learn how to find out the rank of a matrix which is not there in most 11 12 syllabus rank of square matrix as well as a non square matrix etc again vectors is a topic that not everyone has done in their high, uh, high school not high school or uh, senior secondary school so again this topic might be a little new for many of you 
But what is most important is that at the asset level itself, you get a good hold on your stats portion. Why am I saying so? In the maths portion, many topics will not be of much use in your future actuarial papers. Few topics, of course, for example, calculus, again, make sure you have a strong hold over your calculus. If there's any question you're facing problem in, any concept you're facing problem in, make sure even if it's not important for the examination, make sure you get it cleared by us at the earliest so that you do not forget that particular topic again because calculus again is widely used in the other papers. The stats portion as a whole. In fact, let me tell you, the syllabus that has been provided for the statistics portion is nearly 60% of probably your first or second actuarial paper which will be CS1. Actuarial statistics, this will be 50 to 60% of that paper. So if at the ASET level itself you prepare these topics very well, then you it will be uh, like a cakewalk for all of you when you start preparing for your CS1 portion and that time you can spend more time on the more advanced portions while uh, if you do not prepare it right now then that time again you will be struggling and then you might regret that maybe I should have given it time during the ASET examination itself. Coming to plan of action. As you all know you all have your examination on 23rd June, 23rd or 24th? When is the ASET examination? <coughs> 24th June. It is on 24th June. Last date for registration, which means registrations close on 24th May which is one month before the examination and they are already open so you can start registering now itself. Some of you might be preparing for the December diet. Some of you might be preparing for the uh, December diet. That exam will be conducted on 23rd December for which registrations will be open from 12th July up to again 23rd November one month before the examination. So now for those of you who are preparing for the June diet, I hope all of you know that the examination is for three hours. The examination is for three hours. So those of you preparing for the June diet, either you all have started with your classes, that's good enough for those of you who will be starting today onwards you all have near about two months a little more than two months like a week more than two months two months plus one week now in this two months plus one week make sure the last 20 days are left only for mocks and revision mocks and revision you have to step one watch classes step 2 solve assignment step 3 watch assignment classes and then finally attend live discussion for areas not clear okay now these are the four steps you have to follow for every topic I have told you all which order to move in every day try and study right now you all are probably in the middle of uh, you're basically in an interim period you all must be done with your board examinations and you all must be awaiting your college results right even for those who are not in this period right now, even those of you who are currently already in college or working, try and take out four hours a day. 
because if i say 4 hours a day in a sense you will be studying only for around 2 and a half hours 2 and a half to 3 hours is all you will be studying if i say 4 hours a day every day if you study this much and watch a few classes it is more than enough for you to actually ace the examination the aset examination is not extremely tough but again it is your first professional examination probably so you will be requiring good practice and good confidence before you go for the exam all right and again in these 4 hours which you will be studying divide them divide your time in a 70 is to 30 ratio where 70% of your study time should be focused on the maths and stats portion and 30% of your time should be focused on the lrdi and english portion okay in this way you will have control over all the sections and at the same time you will not get bored of what you are studying okay now any questions yes vanisha when is the doubt that you'll be starting uh from next week itself uh, okay ma'am and ma'am uh, i live in surat prasad stores in the center as known why so i have to go there and ex give the exam yes you have to okay when you get your uh, admit card or your hall ticket at that time you will uh, be given the address of the center so that way you can organize your travel arrangements and in case you want to change your center then i think uh, you still have time to do that yes. hmm so if you think that you have to change you can change it right now okay. hmm. thank you welcome are there any questions i hope whatever we discussed is clear to all of you any portion where you feel that you might face an issue or it will be difficult for you to follow this schedule nothing okay so all of you are appearing for a set in the june diet only or anyone for the december diet as well Shreya Vivek. In June only. Okay. And all of you have started your preparations. Yes. Yes. Great. Okay. So uh, from this week, we will be beginning with our live doubt sessions. Uh, I will be discussing on the group when to keep them, what topics to cover in the doubt session. So you all, please be active on the group. And in case any question, you all face issues in. then you can always send it on the group and try to solve each other's doubts because in that way everyone will be benefiting okay your doubts will be cleared immediately others will also be working on your doubt that will clear their concepts more always remember that teaching is the best way of studying if you explain something to someone if you teach something to someone that concept will always be ingrained in your mind because at that time you are uh, covering that concept in a way so that in case the person sitting in front of you asks you any question you want to be prepared for that answer right so that is why please be active try solving doubts for each other and discussing whatever the content is okay So thank you all of you